so now we have already talked about all of this so count and frequency is basically where you are trying to kind of count the number of times the word has occurred in a particular text and that is the feature that you have right and there are there's something else which is called tfid which we'll cover next which is a slightly more advanced version and we'll come to that in a while but as of now let's focus on count vectorization and understand that thoroughly right and that's a back of words approach back of words approach also consists of tfid vectorization as well so back of words also consists of uh, count vectorization and tfid vectorizer tfid will cover in a while but let's understand count vectorizers count vectorization as such uh, in a full detail so count vectorization is this process where you have this text document you are converting into a array of features how do you take those features is basically you look at all unique words and you basically put number of times that word has occurred that in that document for each of those features so now let's apply count vectorization to our problem so what you do is basically you first import the same thing from sklearn once you import that uh, you can basically see this is uh, so we can basically first uh, now you have to initialize this particular vectorization so all we can so now let's initialize the count vectorizer so now we have imported the count vectorization from sklearn let's see how this whole thing works right so we import that then we basically see that this is a class of count vectorizer uh, obviously one thing to kind of note now is that you know, the entire thing that we have talked about lemmatization stemming and all of those things so what does a vectorizer take input the vectorization vectorizer basically takes input the raw text right so in a raw text in the form of a uh, so you need text in the form of rows right so rows this is your text and this is your row 1 row 2 row 3 yeah, right so this is a text you have and then this is something that you fit to the vectorizer this is remember this is an unclean text right and you feed all of that into the vectorization the vectorizer basically gives you the output in the form of features right which are count vector features so there would be unique all the unique words in the, the text document along with if you're using bigram words and bigram features as well and the corresponding representation for each row that's what you get so that's the idea of vectorizer so now oh, one thing to obviously note that which, which is why i kind of explained to you all of this is basically the idea that vectorizer kind of takes your raw unclean text data right and the whole all those things that you have discussed as of now uh, lemmatizations removing stop words uh, doing uh, stemming and all of those things that we have discussed as of now all those things you are basically fit as parameters to the vectorizer let's see how so first you basically say that what is a tokenizer you are going to use then you say what is the stop words that are you going to remove then you're going to say what are the paragraphs in gram range basically says how many kind of do you want just monograms if you just want monograms you pass range one comma one if you just want monogram as well as bigram you pass range one comma two you want monogram and bigram and trigram then you pass range one comma three so that's the idea that you have so number of and then you say number of uh, so now the last two parameters is says max df equals to 0 0.5 which basically says that ignore words that basically occur more than 50 percent of the documents so if there's a word which is occurring in each of the text documents probably giving it a count of one or two whatever it is every time in the document doesn't make sense right similarly there's a min df which basically says that number of times at least the word has to occur right at least it has to occur in three four documents or five documents for it to be even considered as a feature right because if it's suppose there's a word which is just occurring once in one particular document basically one document is a one row right so if it's just occurring in one example and you're kind of having a feature for that so that feature would be just be populated for that particular row and all the other rows would have zero right so it doesn't make a lot of sense so those are the things that you kind of set as params obviously you can also set up so what is not here in the example is also you can set up uh, params for doing your lemmatization stemming everything all those pre-processing cleaning steps that we have discussed as of now so you can basically set all of those as parameters to the vectorizer and you are set that's it that's that, that that's that's all about it is there right so vectorization is something that you're clear you just give it the text in the form of rows of 
unclean data you said what are the different steps that you need to do once it i'll understand once you said that these are the steps that you need to do you have done tokenizing lomatization stemming stop word removal you have done all of that then just kind of convert that into sort of row and columns of features that's your vectorizer for you uh, as i've already said that vectorization takes kind of data in the form of rows of unclean text so to do that we have to first kind of traverse so now we have to kind of take the data which now for our, in this particular case the data exists not in the form of rows of data but basically form of folders where there are folders for each of the authors you remember the task that we set out to do in the first place so our task was we had text documents and we had the corresponding author names from them and given any new text we had to kind of identify which author has written them so now the text is not in the form of like author and name author and author name author and author name that's not how it is the data in this kind of case in this particular example resides in the form of you have data then you have uh, main folder then you have in that folder you basically have all the author names and the in author names as folders in that folder you have got the corresponding text document from that author so basically what we have to go is kind of read all of those text documents and put them in the x column and the author name which is basically the folder name put that in the y column for each of the text documents so that's something that we are going to do right now so that's the part uh, this is what we are doing right now so we are kind of going into each of the authors list and then in each of the authors we are going to list down all the files read them put them in a data frame where each of the text is your y x and the author name which is the folder name in y and once we have that uh, let's see how that looks like so this is your train x so see this is a big whole text this is a chunk of text right so basically this is a text that you have and for that corresponding text you will have the corresponding author name so this is the author name which is jan lopatka whatever and this is the piece that has been authored by him so this is the amount of uh, you know nlp is obviously as you can see now earlier you would have your one row which probably consisted of five six features 10 15 features uh, now it's not anymore like that you have a your first row is basically the entire chunk of text that's it with all sorts of things right the text basically has got all sorts of tables and whatnot right so you are going to deal with that uh and we are gonna try and see obviously dealing with this is something we have already kind of covered we're doing the whole pre-processing removing numbers and all that we want to do we can just do all of that so now that we have done that so now let's first do the basic hygiene thing which is basically separating the data into train and test the same thing this is this this part is something that you are absolutely familiar with and i've been telling that since the start of the lecture today that this is just basically a feature engineering thing that we are doing now so this is the first example of the training example first not, not the first but the second training example that you see here so this is a text and now yeah so now this is something that you have already i've explained to you so then you have your train which is this was in a form of a list now you put that in a form of a series so now you have finally something which looks like your pandas data frame except that this is raw text you cannot directly fit a machine learning classifier on top of it you need to convert this text into some sort of numeric representation right and that's why we are going to use the vectorization pipeline that I've told you already earlier. So it's basically now it, what it does is it just takes the pandas time frame, pandas data frame and that's it. See, you have got the feature names. So these are the different features that are there correspond. The first 50 features that are there. So your first 50 feature basically, the first feature basically tells you that. So there would be a column for this feature. There would be a column for the second feature. There would be a column for the third feature and so on and so forth. Right. So there would be a column the first feature column would basically say that if this particular thing dollar and then space and a close bracket so if this particular thing was present in the document or not right the second feature would be basically saying that if dollar sorry basically dollar 0 0.05 was present in your document or not the third feature is basically telling you present and the count sorry it's basically telling you the third feature says if the dollar 0.10 uh, was present and what count of it was present in that right so in that document 
So that's the idea that we have from count vectorization. It's something very simple, right? It's it's very simple. You just take the unclean data. You look at all possible unique words that could be there. In this case, you have used bigrams. So you look at all unique words plus all unique possible combinations of words, and then you basically see if that word or that combination of word was present in the document or not. So that's now you have converted your text data into something which is a numeric representation. Uh, obviously, some things to note out here, which is. Uh, frankly, a uh, more important things kind of uh, which is a very important thing that yeah. So uh, one thing that kind of I want to kind of take your attention and kind of tell you is that so obviously I've learned how to kind of convert your uh, you know text to a numeric form. But the thing that you note here is that the features that you have right have got your exclamations, dollar marks, it has got numbers in there, and all sorts of messy things, right? So that's something that you can definitely definitely improve, right? Uh, until and unless obviously you think that probably 0 0.05 some author only writes in forms of numbers then probably or probably writes only say financial article which just concerns dollar values so that is probably a very unique characteristic of an author until and unless you feel that probably it's not a good idea to kind of include dollars and all of this date time stamp and all these things that is there currently in the feature list right you see this feature list right so it's dollar 0 0.1 and all of this so until unless you feel a requirement for this particular things to be there in your data set as features uh, remove them right definitely don't try and keep them so try and include them as stop words or something of that sort right uh, the, the most most convenient way to i think is do stop words and you know or probably once you get the list of features look through them just remove the ones that you really don't think are correct right so just drop those columns so that's the idea obviously so there's 27472 columns that we have right obviously insane number right 27472 columns 27,000 columns, right? That, that, that's insane amount, right? And you understand why that, right? Because you're gonna look at all possible words. And now that you have not only looked at all possible words, you have also looked at all possible combination of words, right? Two, two combination of words. So that's insane, that's insane. That's why you have 27,472 possible features. And that obviously cannot be represented as a normal matrix. So it's something that is represented as a sparse matrix. So sparse matrix because most of the times, for any given document, hardly there would be say out of 27,472 features, hardly 10 or 100 or max 100, more, not more than 100, right? 150 features would probably be populated. The rest of them are all zeros, right? Same for most of the, all the documents, right? Until unless it's a maximum word count probably for each document is some 200. If that is also the case, 200, 300. Yeah, you know, 10% of your features probably are being used at max, right? 90% of your features are completely zero. So obviously the best way to represent such a matrix is through sparse matrices. And that's what we have here. Uh, this is your test vector. So test vector is, so just one thing to kind of keep a note here is, in case of uh, training, what you did was you trained your data, you first took your vectorization and you fit it on X-Train, right? And then once you do that, so your fitting is on X train. Then you kind of transform your X train and you transform your X test as well, right? Remember just the one thing that I kind of wanted to say is that don't fit on X test as well, right? Because the idea is that uh, if you do it, what will happen? What, what does fitting in X test kind of imply? It's basically, it's going to look at all the words in test X test and then gonna come up with own list of features, right? That's what you don't want because in the training, if you have 1500 features in test, you have 1000 features, that's your model would not be able to work, right? So you're basically gonna have the same features in your train and test. So that's why only fit on train and then transform your test and as transform your train and obviously transform the using the same thing without any further fitting, transform your test. So now you've got 27,472 features as well, but 100 row data points, right? So now this is how your data point looks like, right? So basically you have got the features and you can see as, as I was obviously saying that there are a lot of sparse matrices out here. So this is exactly how your now training data looks like, right? So you can do whatever you want to do. So you, it was basically a sort of lengthy chunk of text. Now what you have done is sort of not very computationally efficiently, but what you have done is basically you have converted that into 27,000 feature representation, right? 27,000 features. If for each basically vector you're saying if that particular thing was there or not. 
so that's awesome right so now this is something you're familiar with you know what to do ahead with this which is basically the same machine learning algorithms and that's so now uh, yeah so what we are going to use is something called uh, Bayesian naive base algorithm something that you're probably not familiar with you can read more about Bayesian algorithms out here uh, all I'm going to say is that for you to kind of get understanding of what Bayesian algorithm fundamentally naive base or some of these things that we are going to talk about here is basically this understanding called uh, Bayesian statistics which is basically on the idea that there's a prior probability and given a prior probability what is the posterior probability. Uh, I'll break it down in a very simple terms because I don't have the kind of context I I don't have the entire bandwidth to kind of explain you base models but the idea is that uh, given that these features have occurred in a text document what is the probability that uh, this document would belong to class 1 or what is the probability it would belong to class 2 and that sort of thing that you're kind of trying to get at. Um, I cannot obviously go into the entire explanation and details of what base method exactly does but broad understanding is this that given these are the features that have occurred what is the probability of something belonging to a document belonging to a particular author class right so that's the thing and then obviously even if you don't understand there's nothing much in it which is very different from the rest of the machine learning algorithms i would strongly suggest you can go ahead and fit your random forest fit your decision trees fit your logistic regression whatever you want to do and this the, the training thing is basically the same thing you first can the only thing is you convert because it's a sparse array right your training vectors is a sparse array so you first convert that into using two array into a normal vector normal metrics and then you just do the dot fit and dot predict right everything that you normally do the, the, the same thing that you kind of gonna do out here and that's it so see the, you have got accuracy scores out here which is around 0.8 right which is fairly awesome right given uh, there are multiple classes that could be possible so your algorithm is working perfectly fine so you can see a precision recall for each of the authors that you can see and it seems pretty awesome right so the point i'm obviously it could be awesome it could be worse it could be bad i don't care the point to understand here is that how you took something that was completely text represented that into a set of features once you understand that basic thing the rest of the things are pretty flat and pretty easy to understand right so nothing much in here uh, obviously better feature engineering will result in better results right so because all that is there in this entire task was feature engineering we had a text and we did feature engineering to come up with set of features that can represent the text so now we obviously can do something which is better feature generation then probably we might have a better shot at making better models right log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates